the film. Yeah. Yeah. So wild, right? Third act was an adventure. Uh, <laughs> very different from the first two, right? So how we like to start this this show, like every other time we like to start the show. Tyler, hit me off. You got any taglines? We do. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> pull uh, something. <laughs> I don't not. have a small enough waist to pull off those kicks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I appreciate that you tried at least. I was actually scared I was going to put my foot through this cardboard table, so I was. Uh, it was it well, that was what we were originally planned to do, wasn't it? Yeah, Jonathan was going to throw me through a table. But then I realized, like, fuck that. <laughs> That's going to hurt a lot. So here's our taglines, folks. Dalton lives like a loner, fights like a professional, and loves like there's no tomorrow. All right. This guy fights, fucks, and thinks. <laughs> Unlike any other man on the planet. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, that's the triple threat right there. <laughs> the dancing's over. Now it gets dirty. <laughs> oh, shit. Snap! <laughs> Damn. That's, yeah, that's I, I should have saved that for last. That's I can't the complain about that one. Dalton's the best bouncer in the business. His nights are filled with fast action, hot music, and beautiful women. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's the janitor of the double deuce. <laughs> God, what is jo his job must have been like before Dalton came in. So much shit and blood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, with a budget of $17 million, a USA gross of $30 million, and a cumulative worldwide gross of $87.9 million, with knife slashings, seven pairs of breasts, one sex scene, bar fights, head smashed into tables, sexy man ass, <laughs> tai chi, roundhouse kicks, punches to the face, knees to the groin, leg breaks, explosions, gunplay, and throat ripouts with a body count of eight. A 6.6 .6 on IMDb, a 36 Metacritic score, a 39% on Rotten Tomatoes, and nominated for five Golden Raspberry Awards, including <laughs> Worst Picture, Worst, yeah! Worst Director, Worst <laughs> Screenplay, Worst Actor for Patrick Swayze, and Worst Supporting Actor for Ben Gazzara. Sadly, it was beaten by Showgirls preemptively. <laughs> <laughs> Just always. <Yeah. laughs> it's 1987's Roadhouse. Let's make some noise and let's drop, drop some, some bombs. bombs. I want you to be nice until it's time to not be nice. You're too stupid to have a good time. You want to fight, dickless? I sure ain't gonna show you my dick. Elvis, play something with balls. You gotta have a pet to keep it on a leash. I used to fuck guys like you in prison. So... All right. Uh, uh, let's kick this off. First, um, kicking it, it. It's awkward because normally we have guests and we were like, well, we have this set. How are we going to sit? And ladies and gentlemen, we would like to please ask you in a warm welcome for our special guest tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause for Patrick Swayze's Ghost. Yay! Keep it going. It's a long walk all the way from back there. Oh, oh. my love. Thank you. My darling. Take a seat, Mr. Swayze. Yeah, thank you. Ah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, that bit would have worked a lot better if we had audio. <laughs> <laughs> um, or maybe not. Maybe it's in real poor taste. I don't know. Is it, is it still too soon? I think it's been a while. I mean, he was amazing. Yeah. I, I mean, get applause for Patrick Swayze in this film. Yeah, kick ass. <laughs> it, it truly, like, 
the 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 fun part is that Joel Silver has come out and said that this film he uh leaned into it. He was he was leaning into the joke, but for all it's worth, Patrick Swayze is giving it his all. Like like this is the role of his life. Yeah, he he kicks ass in this, but also uh he But also kicks ass in this. Yeah, he really does. But he's gone on record saying that he didn't think he was going to survive making this film. Oh yeah. Like, like it almost killed him. So all the stunts were real. <laughs> in this film uh like like uh Sam Elliott and Patrick Swayze and a lot of the fighters they were all trained by an actual stuntman uh that that knew tai chi and martial arts yeah so that was wild um th- for all that the movie is like it is wildly entertaining <laughs> you could say that yeah <laughs> yeah this is a interesting interesting film yes so uh we open up on the film and uh we're now at at, at a bar that Dalton works in. Yes. Yeah. The uh, the titty twister. Yeah. Did anybody else see the band that was playing? Anyone know where else that band has performed in a large bar? That's yes, right. that is that is the band that would eventually become Tito and the Tarantula, the band that performs in the Titty Twister and From Dusk Till Dawn. So, yeah, I know it's hard to imagine him not playing like a torso guitar, but, uh, you know, that's them. <laughs> <laughs> and then promptly exploding when the number is over. Fuck you. Good night. <laughs> so um, we're introduced to the owner of the Double Deuce, who they need to make sure that you know that he's from out of town because he has an airport limo. Yeah, <laughs> that's labeled airport limo. Ah, yes, my favorite company. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 before airport limo black. <laughs> that one cost extra, right? And uh, so. We're introduced to Dalton, and he's just staring down everybody like he does in every bar. Yeah. I think that's part of his M.O. Yeah, he, he would make a – Swayze would made, would have made a cool Batman because he's just so brooding the entire time. He's just like – Actually, yeah, I, I'm down for that. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> sick. <laughs> Come uh, back from the dead, man. We got a roll for you. <laughs> um, so they witness a fight. And I, I, what happened to cause this fight? Like, does anybody know? Like, there's a hundred dollar bill placed on the table, and then like the people stabbed a knife into it, and then game on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't disrespect our currency like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I don't want to see signs of the Illuminati on this dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's an unnecessary reaction. <laughs> yeah, throw that in with like when that guy gets hit in the back with the axe in uh, uh, Friday the 13th. Four? Five? Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm talking That's about. That's a deep cut. <laughs> yeah. uh, literally. Yeah. Um, so at, at this point, uh, Dalton does what he does best, but he gets stabbed in his arm in the process and then kicks that guy out. The guy's just like, come on, man, I've always wanted a piece of you, which is our first sign in this movie of homoeroticism. <laughs> it's Whoa. going to be a running theme. We made a mistake in the movie we chose last month. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> um, so the next the next part, uh, the double deuce owner, which I his name is escaping me probably through the whole thing. So he will be known as double deuce owner for me. And <laughs> I like to think of him as guy you were definitely thinking was going to be a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> I call him bar cuck <laughs> <laughs> because he is submissive to every single person in this film. He's like, you can come in. Fuck my bar. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he offers him. Uh, well, basically, Dalton demands that he is his pay is five thousand up front, and then five hundred a night. And he's like, yeah, that's cool. Which, if you look at this bar, there's no way that he can afford him. And then for the amount of time that it seems that Dalton is there, there's no way he could have afforded him because there's a lot of construction that happened. <laughs> he had to have been there for at least six months. Can someone crunch the math for me? Because I forgot to. What's what's Oh wait, I'm dumb. That's an easy number. Don't do it for me. I'm dumb. Or you, were you gonna do like like five times three? I was gonna, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, that's stupid. Never mind. <laughs> um. So 
at this point, we see how Dalton gets out of town and sets up his next location, which is first he gives his keys to the guy who drives the dump truck in Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> also, the voice inspiration for uh, for Weird Science when they're in the bar. Yeah. He's drunk. <laughs> Drag it. <laughs> um, and then... He basically because that was another loner car, which we won't understand until a couple scenes later. Yeah, and he jumps in that that really cool like I get the kid on the weekends car and to like speed <laughs> off in. <laughs> yeah, the single dad car. Yeah, <laughs> hey bud, get in. You can sit in the front with me. <laughs> I swear I'm not having a midlife crisis. Car. <laughs> so yeah, they really want you to think that Mercedes is super cool. <laughs> is it the one that had the windshield wipers on the headlights? Most do. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> is that you I don't know. I'm not rich enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he he gets in his car and he drives. Um, do they ever say where this first bar was? This first one that he's at? Yeah. No. Okay. But it seems like it only took two hours to get to the Double Deuce because he was there like the next night or like yes. the same night. Which is in a fictional town of Jasper in Missouri. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and so now he shows up at the Double Deuce. And have uh, anybody in the audience, have you ever felt dirty just watching a scene? Like, have you felt like you're like, I need to stop the film and take a shower? Yeah, when we when we showed Showgirls. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah this bar is gross. <laughs> so what's funny is uh, behind the scenes on this one is that uh, Joel Silver thought that the bar didn't look gross enough and asked just random people to come in and trash it. Oh, sick. <laughs> That's a cool job. I want to be bar messer upper. <laughs> bar trasher would have been better. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, and so you, you see a couple different people around the room. You have, uh, a Jerry Curl bouncer, uh, who is overly <laughs> aggressive. Yeah. You have a drug dealing waitress. Uh, you have overly friendly and soon to be like sensation, vocal sensation waitress. Yeah. That, that was a weird one. That was one. a weird choice that never really goes past that one scene. It's like, I heard she can sing. Anyway, don't talk about her again. <laughs> um, there's also, uh, the guy mustache, mustache cousin. Behind the bar, <laughs> who's skimming from the till? Yes, right. Yes, and then uh, we have a uh, uh, statutory rape bouncer who is like, "Hey, she's under eighteen. He's like, "That's all right. Come with me." <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on in this bar. Yeah. <laughs> there is. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's just like there's enough going on in this bar that actually they should have been shut down already. Yeah. <laughs> Like they, Dalton should have gotten there and boards should have been on the windows and doors. <laughs> no investigation whatsoever. Cops step in the door. Sorry, you folks are closed. Right. <laughs> Especially because, OK, so Brad, right, the villain in this movie seems to own the town. Right. And it seems that he would profit from everything that's going on because he takes 10 percent from everybody in the town. But, so why isn't he stepping in with this um, giant, a massive amounts of goons and cleaning up the double deuce himself? Damn. Exactly. Because <laughs> then we wouldn't have Roadhouse. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> also, what a fitting name for that character, Brad. <laughs> Apologies to any Brads in the audience. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, w the double deuce owner comes in and what I love, what I love about this scene is like, so he, he sees on the, on the writing, like for a good fuck, right? Yeah. For, <laughs> and he writes Buick. Yeah. For a good Buick. <laughs> oh, it's, it's like, shit, I do need a car. <laughs> <laughs> How many other Buicks are all over the, the place though? <laughs> like, I'm just trying to get dick down. And people keep asking me for this car. <laughs> Is that some weird act I don't know about? <laughs> <laughs> Buick all the minorities! <laughs> oh no! Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's um because it's that kind of bar. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Trust um, me, the red hatting hat is fitting that that guy wears later on in the damn. film. <laughs> yeah, um, so um, at this point, now uh, there's a break in the music, and we're introduced to Cody, who is played by Jeff. Healy. 
Yes. Right. So, which, if anybody didn't know, is actually like famously, but from the age of like 18 months blind in real life. Yeah. So, which to me, like, I get it. They were picking him because they could use like all his music and, and rights, you know, to music are astronomically expensive. So I get that. But at the same time, uh, this character seems to know a lot about who people are and where they are and what they're doing in the bar for being blind. <laughs> you can smell Dalton. He yeah. just knows his scent. Like, like there's a part. Okay, that happens, and I'll just jump forward for a second. Is that like when Dalton makes his uh, his first kill, you know, like yeah. his first like bounce, right? And just like he smashes the guy's face in the table and is like, "Get him out of there!" And then like uh, here we here we are with Cody, and he's behind the fence, and he's like, "Ladies and gentlemen, Dalton." I'm like <laughs> you don't even know what happened. Dalton be, could be lying like face down on the ground, bleeding out right now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he sucks. <laughs> he's like, I recognize that head smash into the table anywhere, <laughs> right? But you brought up an interesting thing because holy shit, what is this world we live in where everyone knows bouncers at clubs they, like they're celebrities? He's like, yeah, you know. He's getting old. Well, that's the thing. I just read his expose in Vanity Fair. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the weird part, right? Like, like Dalton is hesitant to tell anybody who his name is until um, annoying girl gets it out of him, right? Yeah. And then every single person's like, "Oh shit, that's that guy I know, Dalton." Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's it's odd. It's very odd. And then later on. When Wade comes to town, yeah. Cody does the same thing. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, Wade. <laughs> <laughs> Cody, you're facing the wrong way. Oh, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> um, so he witnesses all the, the, the people and all these characters and then um, basically is like, I got a lot of work ahead of me. There's a gigantic fight that breaks out in which uh, knockoff Randy Quaid in plaid is hit with a bottle. <laughs> yeah. I love it. He's just like at the bar like, <laughs> right? and some woman just randomly throws a bottle and is like, whoops, sorry, Randy Quaid. I don't know why she, she very clearly aimed the bottle at him. She was and, looking right at him. him. And when it hit him, she was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and it was like, whoops. <laughs> I just wanted to get in on the action. <laughs> it's okay. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they the, the, the night goes on and then um, there, there there's something funny that does start this off right the fight in which $20 to, <laughs> to kiss my woman's breasts right <laughs> the local town entrepreneur is, is here <laughs> <laughs> breasts for sale <laughs> come on and get it <laughs> come on kiss the titties $10 each $20 total <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah I, I this is like one of the only like intentionally comedic moments that really works in this movie. I love the guy where he's just like, huh, are you kidding? I've never touched a breast. <laughs> <laughs> this is my lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's so he's so goofy and giddy about it. I feel like they just pulled a guy off the street. We're like, you want to be in a movie and touch yeah. some boobs? And then, and then I thought about this too is because like the music keeps playing through the whole thing. Like Cody's just like, just keep playing. I don't know what the hell's happening. It sounds like it's normal night for the double dudes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank God they put us behind this cage. <laughs> yeah. So um, at this point, uh, we see Dalton. He procures a new Buick. It's actually a Buick. Oh, God. Right? <laughs> he must have called that number. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he gets tires, which don't come into play yet. We don't know why he needs extra tires. Yeah. Um, he gets this gorgeous barn apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have some questions about this barn apartment. Please tell. Um, wouldn't it like, you know, Missouri gets cold in the winter? Like, holy shit, would it be freezing in that during the winter? That's when you sleep with the horses. <laughs> you gotta love. No, that's when he's like, gets cold in the winter, but you can shack up with me. <laughs> <laughs> Farmer Santa. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yeah. Farmer Santa's is a funny one. Yeah, because, he's, he's a weird character. Yeah. Yeah, because like it, it, there's not much to him other than he's Farmer Santa, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that and like he, 
And one of the most like poignant like messages in the film about like basically if he doesn't charge rent for the apartment, then the church will judge him. Yeah. And, and far be it from the church to not want to make a profit. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, Damn. Yeah. Somebody's throwing shade in this film. Also for a hundred dollars a month. Hell yeah. I'd sleep in that barn though. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a nice place. It's like the size of a house. Yeah. Right. And he's like, nobody will take it because it doesn't have a phone or a TV. I'm like, you can buy those things. <laughs> <laughs> Which is another weird part. There were people just in 1987 just walking around being like, I demand a phone, a TV, and an apartment please. I noticed all of your lights are plugged into outlets. How the fuck do I put a TV in here? <laughs> is it kerosene ran? Uh, well, it's uh, you don't have any room because there's a lot of space heaters that you're going to need in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah, so so now we're introduced to Brad uh, Brad Wesley, who I just kept the entire time waiting to go take a dump, and then a T Rex come and eat him while he was sitting there. <laughs> I considered him knockoff um, Rick, uh, Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Yeah, no, th- uh, this character is weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, because he's he's one of the uh, uh, I feel like he's not fleshed out enough. No, the 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 basically being the mob boss of this small Midwestern town is like the oddest turn that they took three quarters of the way through the movie. Well, I, I think another problem is that this character doesn't get to flesh himself out as a villain because the movie spends so much time trying to through other people's dialogue to explain what his problem is, what his deal is. They're yeah. like, yeah, he used to like the doc chick. Right? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, he, he skims money off of this and takes 10% off of this. Literally every other person is trying to explain what his deal is instead of him just sitting down, like maybe with his goons and being like, I'm so sick of him fucking my girl. <laughs> yeah, uh, just a word of advice. Close your windows and turn your lights off if you're going to fuck. Yeah. He's going to watch. <laughs> could, you, could you not do it on the porch on it? <laughs> just a suggestion. Yeah. You know, I'm here. I'm just sitting down on my porch. I have a smoke. And there you are. The real reason. Ass he, out. Yeah, the real reason he wants to kill Dalton is because they both suffer from eagle eyes where they can see like, like <laughs> miles across this lake to each other perfectly. Like, in their homes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this town ain't big enough for both of us. Only one of us can see across this lake. <laughs> no. uh, so Dalton comes back to the bar with a plan. First, he fires Jerry Curl Man. He's not cut off for the job. First, he just comes in and is like, hey, I'm new. No one knows me. Fuck you, 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 you. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, right? damn. Yeah. Uh, you fi- kind of suck. <laughs> fires the girl for... Um, Selling drugs. Yep, selling drugs. And then puts out three rules. Three rules that I'm not exactly certain that him or anybody else in this movie kind like followed full fully. Yeah, sp- spoken just like a true philosopher. It just doesn't make <laughs> sense. <laughs> so, number one... Never underestimate your opponent. Expect the unexpected. That's probably the most cut and dry one there. Because <laughs> they will come in with those shoes from Kingsman with the knife blades and the, the soles and they'll, they'll fuck your shit up. Right? That, that'd that be the last, like, I'm definitely not cut out for that job because I just, like, I would never look at people's shoes. I don't, I'm not like, what are those? <laughs> if I was Dalton I, and that guy walked in, I'd be like, yeah, I made enough money. <laughs> Just like leave. Yeah. It's like, Bye, guys. I, uh, you know, I did not sign up for knife boots. <laughs> That's a lot of preparation. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, take it outside. Which they do not do a well, very yeah, good one job. Would, <laughs> one would argue more than half the fights occur inside in this film. Yeah, that was a. Uh, good try, though. Yeah. <laughs> and then number three, be nice. Which I'd say. They don't do as much be nice as just like watch and don't do anything until the last possible minute. The rule should be let them fuck everything up, then intervene. <laughs> yeah. it's like, let them smash all of your tables, all of your glasses, and like beat each other up, and then maybe step in. Cause at least my nightly salary and damage, and then kick them out. <laughs> yeah, he's really trying to sink this bar is what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> then he's going to sweep it out from underneath the owner. So, um... Yeah, at at this point now the another fight breaks out and that's where Cody's like his name is Dalton. Yeah. <laughs> so dumb. And um so after this 
we get a scene in which Brad is, I guess, day drinking and drunk driving in the road. I think he's just like rich person driving. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, give me a ticket. I can afford it. The trailers <laughs> for sale. Of rent. Yeah, was, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> King of the road. <laughs> yeah, but it's weird. Yeah, it's it's the most like out there like scene for this guy it's just well like, because because like whether you're rich or not like you would just drive on the opposite side of the road and then purposely run somebody off the road <laughs> i don't yeah i don't I don't get it. <laughs> it, it, it it was like they were setting up to be him to be like an eccentric like rich guy and then they forgot and yeah. <laughs> they were like yeah he just hunts whatever yeah so what I like to point out is that as this movie goes on, now we're like just kind of introduced to the vignettes, like just like then this happens and then this and then this. So like we'll just go through here. Yeah. So we have Tai Chi scene that comes yeah. up next, right? In which like to me, another extremely homoerotic. Oh, portion. dude, Hobo Santa's sack is full. <laughs> 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 no, Hobo Santa is so interested in what's happening there. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to put baby baby oil on him right now. He already has it on him. Why is he <laughs> yeah. so sweaty? He's just waving his arms around. <laughs> and then Brad is mowing the lawn and then stops and is like, God damn, what a man. <laughs> yeah. He then can see all the way across the lake to him and be like, fuck. God, what's that? Oh, what's that glare? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this is one of those things that never comes back. <laughs> him doing this ever again. Nope. Nope. Um, so then another fight breaks out at the bar in which, uh, the, the person who was fired the night before for skimming the till comes back because he's Brad's cousin. Right. Or nephew. Nephew. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 And, and, and basically threatens to being like, you're going to give me my job back. And he's like, no. And then he pulls out like a crocodile Dundee sized knife, which is definitely the way to get your job back. <laughs> <laughs> can I have my job back? No. All right. I have a knife. Uh, oh. when can you start? <laughs> Would you like a race? <laughs> yeah. Here's the keys to my house. <laughs> yeah. Right. Stabs Dalton, which causes Dalton to go to the hospital. Again, really quick though. If you're going to threaten someone, at least be good. Like, that's, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing is he doesn't even make the, like the slice on him. No, it's the, it's a uh, Tigger. Yeah. <laughs> that His was a name weird is reveal. Tigger, folks. <laughs> right there at the end. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. He's a, uh, he brought a knife to a fist fight and still somehow lost <laughs> like bad. Yeah. So he meets the doc and, uh, Apparently he ta he brings his medical records with him everywhere he goes because he's just used to getting into bar fights, right? And he's like living off the grid too. That's like a subtle weird thing there. I'm going to ask you and anybody, you can just shout it out if this is a thing. Um because I don't know. Do medical records tell where you went to school? <laughs> <laughs> it does for the type of treatment you're going to get. <laughs> NYU, we got a doctor for you. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> uh, yeah, she states that. And yeah, that's a weird one thing. Oh, I noticed you put your resume in there as well. <laughs> Four years at Juilliard. That's amazing. Oh, okay. so I'm really glad because this hospital could really use a bouncer. <laughs> I do like when she asks him like, oh, NYU philosophy. What made you a, a bouncer? I don't know. I got a degree in philosophy. <laughs> got to pay the bill somehow. <laughs> so, um, at this point, we, we, we're introduced to the next day and, um, the, the villain, uh, Brad is, is scolding his, his minions, right? And I, another question that I, I have is, are Bigfoot trucks allowed on the streets? <laughs> that one, that one's really weird. That guy's compensating for something. <laughs> just, just a little. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. That truck is not street legal, but it's awesome. So, I'm not exactly sure how the guy that got beat up is a coward. <laughs> he just doesn't like him. He just wanted to beat the shit out of him in front yeah. of everyone. <laughs> like, like if anybody, like nobody in that fight was a coward. They all kind of drew a knife. <laughs> they all got their asses kicked. <laughs> they were ready to kill. I'd say that's the opposite of a coward. <laughs> that is the one thing about this movie that's so hilarious is that, like, like you were saying, they spend no time setting up who Brad is as a character, but they will show you six scenes of the same four guys getting their asses kicked the same way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so we're introduced to Red, 
who is the town's auto parts salesman. Yeah. Uh, and his store, which is across the street from the Double Deuce. And, uh, which this whole town apparently is just across the street from the Double Deuce. <laughs> there's, there's like one thing. There's a store that's just called Boats. And <laughs> boats. <laughs> and the Double Deuce. <laughs> yeah. And, and what I find is interesting about care, uh, things here is every, everything's across the street from the Double Deuce, but then everybody seems to have an extremely personal connection with about five characters. Yeah, red raised doc. Yeah, I, I, for her parents. Yeah, yeah, when her parents left or something, yeah. or died or something like that, right? I, died or yeah. left or something. whatever. But odd and not a connection that truly has a through line either. Yes, his place gets blown up, but well, wait, that's her. That's her uncle, right? Is it the uncle? Is that what they said? Yeah, yeah so it? it's the same shit as, as I don't Brad care. and his nephew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, this writer was scratching his head like, fuck, what's a relationship besides <laughs> uncle? Somebody give me a family tree. Brother, he's too old. Shit. <laughs> I've tried so hard. <laughs> oh, Buick. If it doesn't take place in the bar, I don't know what the hell is happening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, now uh, when, when Dalton meets him, there's this strange costuming uh, choice that he does a couple times in the film <laughs> in which he wears a kimono shirt? Nah, dude, he just got a sweet shiatsu's massage and he just didn't <laughs> want to take the robe off. <laughs> yeah, that is the weirdest outfit that he could <laughs> stroll in there. <laughs> but it's just like a kimono shirt still tucked in jeans. Yeah, dude, he's cool as fuck. <laughs> if, you, if you're not tucking in the jeans, you're doing it wrong. Or sweatpants, or like those white like kind of wavy pants that he has. Yeah, there, there's an interest. Well, what are, I don't know what they are. <laughs> Pants. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's some weird choices of like uh, any type of attire in this film. They're like, what do rednecks wear? <laughs> yeah, because because when Doc comes up and, and, and to to see him, which is about to happen, she's wearing a picnic table cloth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was again, they were like, <laughs> they're like, oh, I think I know a redneck. This is what they dress like, right? <laughs> <laughs> and rich guys wear Panama hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This shit's easy. <laughs> uh, so also during this time, uh, we're introduced to Sam Elliott's character. Of Fuck Wayne, yes. Which is what <laughs> Tyler's dressed as tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, which they keep referencing that actually Dalton's not the best of the best. Wade is. But... It does not seem like that. No. <laughs> no, he's in like the geriatric home of bars for bouncers, apparently. Yeah. Because he's just like, hey, uh, what does he say? I know you want to go storm the beaches or some shit like take that. Take care of those commies. Yeah, take care of those commies, but I need you to like sit back down and then they just squirt him with water guns. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a strip club. Yeah, but he'd it's rather the world's smallest strip club. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up, Wade? Oh, nothing much. Dalton just being the best of the best. There's probably some guys fighting right behind me, but I don't give a damn. I'll hang up the phone eventually. <laughs> yeah. Also, it said wet G-string con contest, which I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, we're going to see them parts. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's wearing a white one. Bummer. The top's going off, but we're going to see the rest of the parts. Let me tell you. <laughs> I don't like when they show about parts. Not, I know like the here. parts. Either. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, now and he, he calls Sam Elliott, but he doesn't invite him. Which no, is funny when he does show up later. Yeah, he's just like, hey man, how's it going? Yeah, just working at this bar. Pretty easy. Yeah, cool. Yeah, this place is a shithole. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know Brad Wesley? Never heard of him. All right, I'll see you soon. Thanks for the info. <laughs> yeah. I'll look him up and I'll see you soon. Hey, where are you? Somewhere in the middle of the country? Ah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't know this guy. <laughs> right? So... Yes, Dalton gets into another fight with uh, Brad's men. This is where the, the knife shoe comes into play. Um, the double deuce has cleaned up its act entirely. Yeah, it is uh, it, like it overnight. Is, it's nice. It was extreme makeover bar edition. <laughs> <laughs> All right, move the tractor. <laughs> we can see it from behind it. It's a huge building. <laughs> I can see it from miles away. I got eagle eyes. <laughs> so, yeah, um, this is one of my favorite lines in the movie but he's like uh he's like we're just coming here to like uh to drink and he's like sorry bar's closed he's like well what are they all doing and they're drinking and having fun having a good time having a good time and then he throws his boot on him he's like 
you're too stupid to have a good time. Hell yeah. It's like, all right, uh, can we run that again and try it one more time, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the uh, Swayze's one-liners in this. <laughs> are, are, no, no, we're good with that. Don't worry. I've got some worse kill puns later <laughs> on. Later on. Don't worry. <laughs> the other favorite one is uh, the uh, pain doesn't hurt. Oh, yeah. And then he proceeds to be like, ah! <laughs> every time he gets one of those staples. Staple. <laughs> yep. Has anyone in here ever gotten medical staples? No, they hurt so fucking bad. <laughs> it's, it is no joke. I got three in my skull. So like Tyler, pain doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was telling myself while I was crying in the emergency <laughs> room. <laughs> um, so now they go out on a date, Doc and Dalton. Yeah. Right? And uh, they're talking. The, you know, it's, it's just a date. Like, it, But what I find is interesting is why he wouldn't take his own vehicle, knowing that it's been destroyed multiple times at this point. <laughs> yeah. And I really like that he was like, no, 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 it's cool. Uh, can we take your car? She's like, yeah. And she starts getting in the driver's seat. He's like, no, 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 I'll drive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're covered, right? No, that's the second time. Oh, that's out. the second time. Yeah. yeah. She drives him because when they yes. come back, there's that stop sign just through the car. Which... Oh my God, that is effort <laughs> to like <laughs> fuck someone's car. I'm going to rip out this stop sign, which there's no stop sign like around his car, which means that they, they went to the street. No, they had to go to the next town over to get a stop sign. Oh yeah, because there's no street signs here. It was a long date though, because Tigger was uh, wiggling the sign back and forth for like three and a half hours <laughs> to get the, uh, the sign out of the ground so they could do it. And, and then like what I love about it is that like... She's like, all right, good night. Good luck with your stop sign and four flat tires. <laughs> well, see, Jonathan, this is something that uh, I think you could learn from is that no matter how shitty your car is, a woman will still take you out on a date. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had a joke about taking notes, but we missed it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... And, uh, anyway. <laughs> so Poor Jonathan. Now, there's a very interesting, like, I'm going to say kind of cameo because all his scenes were cut. Does anybody know who I'm talking about? Did anybody spot him? Anybody? Keith David. Keith yep. David. Keith David is now one of the new bartenders in red behind the bar. The whole film. Yeah. The most interesting person you could have put in this movie. And he you were just a, like, fuck it. He, <laughs> he had a subplot in which he actually gets into a fight. Rowdy Ride Piper is there. <laughs> it was crazy. They fight to put sunglasses on for way too long. Just but... behind, behind a dumpster. Yeah. It's great. No, no, but there was a subplot in which he, he did get into a fight. That's how him and Dalton like get along and meet and and things like that. It's all there. Apparently, the original cut of this film was three and a half hours long. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> it was only that much longer because there was ten more scenes of Road the same four guys <laughs> getting their asses kicked. Road houses. <laughs> Road houses. <laughs> Give us the director's cut. <laughs> Release the Snyder cut. The silver cut. <laughs> silver cut. Uh, yeah, <laughs> mile long road house. <laughs> um, so now uh, Dalton and Doc go and have another night out and then they decide to have sex. Yeah. It's really passionate until you think about the fact that her butt cheeks are definitely being like cheese grated against that like rock wall. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could think about is how rough that would have been on, on her skin. Yeah. He couldn't have chosen a more uncomfortable place to like slam a body against. <laughs> <laughs> so fun fact real. This is real. Are you doing the one I think you're... you're yeah. So according to Kelly Lynch, who plays Doc, whenever Bill Murray sees her sex scene with Patrick Swayze on television, he calls her husband, Mitch Glazer, to tease him about it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many times I've seen this on television in the past three months? This movie's <laughs> never not on television. <laughs> it is always on. Hey, Mitch! Saw your wife. <laughs> it's three in the morning. He's like, God... <laughs> Damn it, TNT. <laughs> Choose a different movie. <laughs> Don't you have Pulp Fiction to show? Turner! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 that's wild. Because, like, apparently she said that in an interview or something. <laughs> that's, yeah, uh, this sex scene is, is, like, 
really weird because apparently it wasn't satisfying enough and she just fell asleep <laughs> and then proceeded to be like, we can fuck on the roof. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which he just sits outside naked on the roof smoking cigarettes. But you know what? Points to her for being so modest <laughs> to walk out to the to the porch where he's laying naked and only show the entire audience everything. She's like, is that Brad over there? <laughs> I can see him and I know he can see us. He's going to be so fucking mad. <laughs> he is Jerking it in his rocking chair on his porch right now. <laughs> it's those eagle eyes. <laughs> okay, that's weird too. Um, <laughs> does Denise, the blonde bombshell, what is her deal <laughs> in this whole movie? Um, she's married to an old fuck. <laughs> I mean, I'm not one to normally say such things. Uh oh. But she is definitely the town's bicycle. Oh, no. (laughs) She literally just doesn't give a shit. What is that strip dance? (laughs) For the whole bar, it's not just like, this is for you, Dalton. No, it's for the whole bar. Just how inexplicably everyone knows kung fu in this movie. She is, like, (laughs) well-versed in, like, the art of the strip tease. Yeah, like, I just... I don't understand it. And especially like the like almost burlesque show strip tease. It was really wild. I love I love during that that's that tease where she takes her top off and then she goes over to the guy and grabs a cowboy hat. I wish she had been like, no. <laughs> <laughs> she you took a, it off, now you gotta live with it. She does a great job of covering herself with her arms as well, because like everything's just falling out of her arms just at that point. Slipping yeah. from covering it. Everyone's yeah. scared of the top of the boob, right? I mean I mean Beautiful actress, like yes, great fun scene, but but I'm then, just, her, but then I'm just her, like I don't get it because like also Brad is there in that scene just like yeah fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> bar cook <laughs> yeah, that's my girl right that's that's a weird part but we'll uh, we'll get back to that entire pole cue swinging crazy scene oh my God. that that is uh, in a second but before that um, <laughs> have we met that guy. The pool cue guy yet? Jimmy? Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, kind of. He's hanging around. Lost when- Boys Reject? <laughs> just like showed up to the wrong set? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, he's just intensely staring at people, just looking for who he's going to fuck tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. And then, so, okay, this is a part where Sam Elliott comes to town, right? And he's like, uh, the double douche. <laughs> Which is, it's like, you know what? That sucked, but Sam Elliott, I love you. <laughs> you are really giving it 25% and it feels so great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you mean normal? <laughs> yeah. It, it's just Sam Elliott. Yeah. <laughs> he played the same character in The Good Dinosaur, too. It just showed up like, the, you didn't know he's in that? <laughs> Did the dinosaur have a beard or a Yeah, mustache? he's a cowboy dinosaur. <laughs> Damn it. He took the role to not be put in as a cowboy and they're like you're a cowboy dinosaur <laughs> well, god damn it <laughs> uh, so this is where the beer fight out back happens and I love this fight because three of the four men are fighting while one guy is just like smash smash <laughs> no I'm not fighting I'm not touching him he's gonna beat us all up I'm gonna smash his beer I don't I don't understand the smashing the beer why not just like take it <laughs> <laughs> seems wasteful <laughs> because that would be stealing and you'll get in trouble for that oh fuck yeah. i forgot rich people law yeah i gotta remember also that. like i don't understand like this is an ever rotating roster of villains <laughs> because this is where jerry girl guy comes in and be like hey i heard you guys are smashing beer let me help yeah and then doesn't fight again no 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 and then there's big guy who you never <laughs> see oh, a jaws. <laughs> jaws yeah yeah You're just like Oh, there's the big dumb guy who has to be here. Which, which, which goes up to Sam Elliott as he comes in and he's like, you trying to fight dickless? And he goes, well, I'm not trying to show you my dick. Which is again, just like, <laughs> yeah, Sam Elliott, you rock. He also calls him dad, which was like, hey, you want to try that again? Maybe a like generation higher? <laughs> yeah. Grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so at this point, another fight happens, and then um, this is where Cody is like, ladies and gentlemen, wait. <laughs> like, I do and, and everyone applauds. <laughs> like, yeah! Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know, like, why Brad's goons are so shitty, but oh my god, how do they keep losing fights where they have, like, a four-to-one advantage? 
I don't know. <laughs> they, they suck. Well, one can assume that they just haven't faced an opponent like these people, which are just normal people, I guess. A regular sized dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh man, I'm so scared of five foot eight guys. <laughs> We're used to automotive and the guy running boats. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, boats. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sam Elliott, uh, and, and, and Patrick Swayze and Doc, they all go out to like late night after, after closing kind of like diner. Right. Yeah. And this is where like, I'm like, damn, Sam Elliott is going to steal your girl. Yeah. Even though he's joking in that scene where he's flirting with her, I was like, damn, Patrick, sorry, man. That no, he's, trying. <laughs> yeah, he's trying. I'd like you to know that I'm the best and he's not. And honestly, I was rooting for him <laughs> to take her. <laughs> I was like, this is your best bet. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, they proceed to, they go out and they go to a bar and he says, let's take her somewhere romantic and nothing gets a woman's heart pumping faster than the local Denny's. <laughs> it's just, it's like, and then they proceed to romantically dance in the back of house of this restaurant next to like the coffee maker. Everybody. Yeah. Um, and this is where also, uh, uh, Wade uh, basically gives uh, Dalton a backstory. Finally, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's been talked yeah. about. It's been, it's been. Oh yeah, the, the, earlier you when they're him, like, did like, you hear he ripped a man's throat out? I yeah, he fucking killed a dude. Yeah, <laughs> said it was self defense. Right. That's pretty good though. <laughs> what it turns out is that Dalton was sleeping with a man's wife and didn't know about it. And then the guy pulled a gun and he ripped his throat out. Which is like, I mean, logically, Ooh. yeah, rip his throat out. <laughs> that is a perfect way. Maybe middle. just kick the gun away? <laughs> I don't know. No, if you rip, I, I heard, this is just a rumor, but I heard in the United States of America, if you're sleeping with another man's wife and you proceed to rip his throat out, she legally has to marry you. So he just, he got it. <laughs> you see? Oh. You know? Yeah, it's a weird law. The laryngitis clause. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Man, that's an it. But like, that, okay, because why is that his right. go to no, 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 move? No, 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 no. I don't, I don't understand. Okay, so, so you got a gun, right? I do. Give me a gun. There's right? a gun. All right. Throat rip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, how did that happen? Your brains are gone. <laughs> like, he's like, hey, you got something on your neck? Oh shit! What? Ah! <laughs> Not anymore. It's gone. <laughs> hey, there's your wife naked. What? Ah! <laughs> uh, I thought you'd be bigger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what she said which is another another one of those things that's in this that happens in this movie with that line is like i get it's a joke that he's a small bouncer but why the hell is everyone saying it what they're like hey dalton's coming to town everyone this joke pisses him off <laughs> This is like that chicken thing with Marty McFly. You just gotta say it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what was happening? What was the original legend of Dalton? Yo, I heard he's got special people strength. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I heard he's small as fuck. <laughs> like five foot three. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Dalton. They're actually talking about his waist size. <laughs> hey, just like, it's me, Dalton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An 18 inch waist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so now at this point, uh, we, we learn that, uh, Red's place catches on fire. They apparently on had fire. A, yeah, apparently he had a meth lab in it. <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> that thing just blows up. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I think a, a more interesting, uh, story here is where the fuck is Brad's people getting all these explosives? Cause that's an investigation in itself. <laughs> when he's like, should I call the FBI? They're like, nah, well, that's man. the store next to boats. Dynamite. <laughs> explosives. <laughs> Actually, it's written in really small fonts. It's like explosives. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, yeah red's place explodes and it's that cool movie fire that isn't like raging until you look at it no it's <laughs> not raging. It, well it's that cool fire that like doesn't burst into flames until you're right up on it you're running almost into the building yeah yeah and then it's just like <laughs> boom <laughs> oh no it's midnight he's still working <laughs> this uh this explosion is just like uh, the building blows up I think three times I counted it was three <laughs> separate explosions is it three separate or is it that thing where they like cut three different angles? I hope to god it's not that three <laughs> different cuts thing where they're like <laughs> yeah that like boom 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 <laughs> yeah yeah and then it has that growl sound effect behind it, the <laughs> yeah mushroom cloud yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> also, um, myth. <laughs> yeah. Why is everyone like still so close to the fire when it blows up? Like there was metal parts in that building. There was shrapnel <laughs> everywhere. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. <laughs> so we're going to um, get to the mob mentality in a second in yeah. a couple scenes. But <laughs> so now. They go back in and there's Brad and this is the Denise striptease. Scene. Yeah. And, and then basically he pulls her off stage and he's like, if you're going to keep a pet, put her on a leash, which is like, yes, you finally got one. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then Brad uh, is literally like, oh, no, no, no. Here's my pet. Cause here comes Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he should have jumped down the stairs and like, went like, <laughs> <laughs> he, he's just like he's like hey he's like damn it I, I only had a few more balls to go in this game shit <laughs> I'll take the pole with me yeah. just in case <laughs> yeah so he shows up and he starts just flipping the pool cue and doing a bunch of moves that nobody asked for. Again, where is all this karate knowledge coming from? That's the other big building is the dojo in town. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, that's Sensei Richard. Ah, <laughs> uh, Sensei Jimmy Dalton. <laughs> so what, what I don't understand is that, like, one... It's very obvious to me that his look, he is straight up going for, um, uh, blood sport here. <laughs> yeah, 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 very much so. <laughs> like, he looks just like him. Yeah. Right? And, and so, um, it's such a, I don't know, man. It, it, like I said, there's some weird apparel choices going on. Cause like, I mean, it is like a juxtaposition, I guess, of like the goons who constantly get their asses kicks are just like hicks, but like this goth will kick your ass if you don't, <laughs> if you don't leave him alone. <laughs> yeah. So he does a really cool display for like, and I think he gets, well, like first place at the double deuce for, <laughs> for his martial arts skills. And he's, he finishes and he's like <sighs> and scene. And he bows and they're like, wow! <laughs> they give him a trophy. Pretty good with a bow staff. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have, you're gonna have to come get your stuff because I can't fit my nunchucks in my locker. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so now uh, this is where they get into a full on fight. Sam Neill fights him. Uh, everybody fights, but nobody wins. Brad calls it off with a giant gunshot in the air. Yeah. Hey, that's cheating. <laughs> you pay for what you, you caused here. You want to watch this. Don't just shoot a gun. All right. Now time for the running races. <laughs> it just takes <laughs> off because literally it's just a display of like, first it's the striptease and then it's the pool cue martial arts. Now they're fighting and now we're going to run. Welcome to the redneck Olympics <laughs> and they're off. <laughs> And Next week will be monster trucks. Yeah. So now we get another scene after that where Brad starts terrorizing the town. Uh, there's a Bigfoot that just okay. Listen, what? go. This is if, where you, I was gonna... if, if you have a thought on this, because this is this is where I warned people that the film itself will just you know. Uh, <laughs> get into crazy mode this is when it took like when you look at a fork in the road and you see the dirt all the way on the left this is when that turned to it okay this is just like it's like this is where i wanted to talk about the mob mentality here of like why are the regular people of the town cheering as this truck drives through this car dealership they show regular people in the town like ah <laughs> he gave me a loan with a 34% APR. Fuck him. Yay. <laughs> Yay, Monster Truck Madness won't come to Jasper. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. You you touched on something I wanted to say. Jasper. Ladies and gentlemen, where does this film take place again? What state? Missouri. Missouri. Okay, so the 5 freeway definitely does not run through the middle of Missouri because if you see in the background as the monster truck drives through it, there is very clearly a sign that says Bakersfield and Los Angeles that way off on the five highways. It's like, man, you guys really gave up at this point. It's like, Listen, we spent all of our money on the monster truck. We can't crop that out. So at this point, Brad's over it. He's over Dalton's stuff. He's over him taking his girl. He's, he's over all this. And this is where he decides that hobo santa's gotta go oh no because <laughs> they light his house on fire and if they weren't trying to like stop the like like farmer santa thing they should not have put him in like red 
footy pajamas because <laughs> like there's only two things that come to mind with that it's santa and like old crazy miner <laughs> it's just like yeah. uh, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for saving me from Knott's Berry farm <laughs> <laughs> you put the jacket on your santa now <laughs> and he just disappears <laughs> <laughs> and um our our boy uh like uh vampire goth does a really inconspicuous job of getting away from the fire and he's like <laughs> you might as well have turned him and like don't it was me <laughs> bat <laughs> and he also drives so slow away <laughs> to the point where Dalton's able to reach him on foot, <laughs> which is like either Dalton's the fastest man alive or that's like one of those motorcycles you give a child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, now we're getting to the best part of this movie. The line? The line. The line. The line. <sighs> Talk about dropping an entire backstory on a character in two seconds flat. <laughs> There's never once been mentioned that this guy's been to prison. <laughs> Joe Silver was like, um, Jimmy, before I say action, I just need to let you know. We didn't establish anything for you. So, like, literally during the scene, if you just want to improv. I'm good. <laughs> I oh, got you, it. Oh, you got something? Yeah. Oh, you got something. Okay. I got it. I got right. it. So, action. I used to fuck guys like you in prison. All right, cut. All right, cut. We're going to have to do another tape, Jimmy. <laughs> nope, that's it. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I, what, did that not work? No, we need I mean, some, we need something else. Oh shit. Okay, I got I got something else. I got something else. <laughs> Action. I used to fuck guys like God damn it. <laughs> Listen, it's there now. <laughs> the box has been opened. <laughs> yeah, what a weird like character development for this guy. Right? But also, damn, the guys in prison are <laughs> built. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like I used to pick on the small ones. I used to <laughs> They put me in the pretty ward. <laughs> yeah, um <laughs> cell block gorgeous. <laughs> Coming to CW next season. <laughs> um, yeah, what a weird turn of events for this guy. <laughs> um, but they proceed to have a fight, and it's it's kind of Dalton's only like adversary that really stands a chance against him. Yeah, uh, and like actually puts up a fight until Dalton's basically just like enough of this baby shit, and just like proceeds to like snap his leg against a tree, which is sick. <laughs> And then nothing else happens in that fight. Honestly, it just goes on from there. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I can't think of anything. It's not like he goes back to something. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like something that was just established maybe like fifteen minutes ago. That yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. It's not like they just dropped this out of nowhere, and now we're all expecting it. It's, yeah, everyone knows he rips his throat out. Which again, how? How do you do that? He doesn't have long nails. <laughs> if anything, he like. Like pinched him really hard on his throat skin, and he was like, "Ow, fuck!" <laughs> but and he, pop out. Yeah, he literally rips the whole thing out. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that works. But he gets shot in the process, right? He gets shot in the arm, which leads to a really confusing like thing to happen, where Doc is like clearly saw everything, and he was like. <sighs> Oh, you were just defending yourself, but fuck that. It's just like, I don't want my throat ripped out. I'm married. <laughs> I don't want you to meet my husband. But she leaves, like, frightened of him. Well, yeah, he just killed somebody. He just got shot. <laughs> yeah, he, he still killed somebody. I guess. And, and that's just not her deal. I also do like, after all of that, she Look, was like... most NYU people that she meets do not kill people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Those guys up at the top, my... <laughs> um, no, and then she proceeds to check his body, which is also a weird one. It's like, no, you saw what happened. Well, he, she's a doctor. He's dead. <laughs> 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 I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, and then he he, pr he proceeds to do the most batshit insane thing, which is drag his body through that lake <laughs> while screaming. <laughs> That's cool. If I was Brad, I'd be like, 
fuck. I need to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. What's Brad's last name again? Uh, Wesley. Wesley's like, Wesley! And the guy's just like, oh, shit, like putting all his stuff in the bag. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> oh god, I saw that whole thing with my eagle eyes. I gotta get the hell out of here. My eagle ears heard it rip out. It was gross. I was mowing the lawn and I just saw a throat rip. <laughs> Officer, you've got to get here quick. <laughs> Shit's fucked up over there at, Ho- at Farmer Santa's land. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn so now brad gives him an ultimatum basically he's like i'm gonna kill your girl or i'm gonna kill wade right and so this is where i don't understand where he didn't just be like wade come with me while i go get the girl <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a real uh dark night situation here <laughs> of like who are you gonna choose <laughs> no choose doc no <laughs> no choose doc <laughs> not me where is she <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 i don't get it there which too- is weird because later on it's like tails <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly uh, that's the sequel <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's uh uh patrick swayze rises <laughs> it's just no the there is one. a sequel i know roadhouse 2 i saw it. yeah right. i didn't see it i saw that it was on it's idea. called roadhouse 2 last call roadhouse 2 electric boogaloo <laughs> <laughs> well roadhouse 2 is just about uh his son like apparently somewhere between roadhouse 1 and roadhouse 2 dalton gets shot and killed whoa <laughs> I guess you can't pull the same throat rip move on a gun <laughs> gun owner multiple times. He ripped the gun's throat out. And, and but that's such still. an odd choice because it's just like this is the son of Dalton because and literally they were like, yeah, we're gonna kill him because he refused to be in our sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Why not just say that he's getting older? Listen, I'm gonna be in Ghost. <laughs> I don't have time for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There was a movie, he got, I was reading in the trivia, he got hurt on this set pretty bad. Like, he hurt his knees, and he, pa- oh, he passed, <laughs> yeah. he passed on Predator 2. Predator 2. To make Ghost, and, so I guess you could say and, he made a good choice. Tango and Cash. And Tango and Cash. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe not. <laughs> so he was knockoff Kurt Russell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was your joker. Yes, I, I've been telling people all week for the longest time, I was like, Man, Kurt Russell, he's just knockoff Patrick Swayze. And then, like, as time went, I was like, oh, no, it's the other way around. <laughs> so they kill Sam Elliott. Weird. He's like, hey, stop sleeping on the bar all weird like a dead body, even though they were said they were going to kill you, which would be weird if they killed you right now. It would make perfect sense. Anyway, wake up, sleepyhead. <laughs> and then... Oh, a knife! <laughs> and then he is pulling the knife out. Like, if he isn't careful, a giant stone will roll down (laughs) and and, and take him from a booby trap. He's just like... (sighs) No, he's just trying not to touch the... (laughs) He's trying not to touch the sides or the the nose will light up and it'll go... (laughs) And then you'll have to try. You'll lose his turn. <laughs> so, yeah, I was. Uh, I I had my back turned for a second because I was looking at something on my phone when that scene was happening. And like, if you, just like if you watch Top Gun with your eyes closed, it sounds like a bunch of men like having sex with each other. This scene was like, I was like, what is he doing? And I had to. Do turn you around. actively watch Top Gun with your eyes closed? There's only <laughs> one way to watch Top Gun. <laughs> no, um, he's. If yeah, I turned my head. I was looking down, and he and he. He's pulling that knife out. He's like, uh, I was like, <laughs> and the, the movie over? is just he's going. Yeah. Um, also, the music takes a weird turn in the end of this movie because it is not from the same film. Does anybody know who did the the soundtrack? Anybody? Or what movie? See the person that did this did right. Because it sounds just like it. It is the same composer that did Lethal Weapon. <laughs> so if you if you were like, oh, Lethal Weapon. <laughs> yeah. There's even sleigh bells in this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's whenever they show Farmer Santa. <laughs> so the climax is pretty straightforward. Do you have anything that you want to? I, I know I have kill puns. Yeah. The kill puns are terrible. So <laughs> Tails again. Which is like, if that guy didn't do that, then he's just like, what the <laughs> fuck? As he's dying. <laughs> what did you eat my Tails again? <laughs> Shit! I guess I'll never know. Hey, Wesley, do you know what he's talking about with tails again? Oh shit! Yeah, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> no. 
But that kill's sick as fuck when he throws that knife up there, yeah. up the stairs into his stomach. Yeah, that is nice. Which, like, wouldn't kill you, just hurt, so I don't know why he just, like, died. He just bled <laughs> out, maybe. No, he, like, was like, oh, I'm instantly dead. <laughs> he just, like, fell off the yeah. banister. And then um, when he traps Tigger under the bear... You're made for each other. Which is like, is that what? Mean? It's because like the bear is stuffed and Tigger stuffs himself full of food. <laughs> also, where was this revelation all of a sudden that this character's name was Tigger? That is established five minutes from now. <laughs> it's like, one last laugh. <laughs> if you thought this fat guy was goofy the whole time, just get a load of his name. Being a redneck's what Tiggers do best. <laughs> Why didn't they use a Winnie the Pooh pump? And they fucked up. Ah. <laughs> There's a grumbly in his tumbly. <laughs> it falls on him. I like monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his um, his kill puns in this suck. <laughs> yeah, uh, he. I mean, he could have chose anything. Like he literally could have been like Schwarzenegger, and the polar bear falls on him. He could have been like chill. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been better. I don't know. These are these are like Running Man levels of bad. <laughs> it's just like yeah. now. <laughs> what is it? Oh, uh, plane zero. Plane zero. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's yeah, that's good. <laughs> cut print. <laughs> um, yeah, he starts to fight with Brad, which is like again, where which I, was as clumsy as like that, like Kirk versus Spock fight from back in Star Trek days. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> there is one weird thing about this fight. For as cool as the fights are, everyone has pillow hands. Like they're, they're like this, the the they're like throwing so hard, and then they just like they have sock and boppers on. They're just like. Hut. <laughs> just like smacking a little bit but also again it brings up the question of how is Dalton getting his ass kicked by this old guy <laughs> just like again and again and again yeah then he cheats and pulls a gun out well, one one can only argue that maybe because he's been shot in the arm and like uh, he, he's gone through all this uh, he's been you know. stabbed like four times in this movie and like shrugged it off I'm just saying <laughs> plus he has like four bolts in him and everything else that Doc said during the examination <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's basically a Terminator I'm falling apart <laughs> um, yeah yeah. The coolest thing Brad does in this fight is throws a fucking spear. <laughs> that, that, and that scene looks so weird when he throws it and it slowly sails to an animal hide in the background. Yeah. It looks like the arrow getting shot in uh, in Friday 13 part 3. Like just like <laughs> yeah, it's on a string. Yeah. yeah. And and then and and then like basically he's going to rip his throat out but he decides not to cuz Doc's like no. You know? <laughs> Don't do it again. <laughs> he's like, well, she kind of walks in on him when he's like on top of him. And he's like, oh, we weren't doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she has to rip my throat out now. <laughs> but also like where he's like, oh, no, she's here. I'm not going to rip the throat out. I'm like, but you already killed like five other dudes that she had to have stumbled across on her way to you. <laughs> <laughs> she finally just got to him and was like, if he kills one more person, I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> and especially if his throat's ripped out, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> and so she doesn't and then he tries to turn on him with a gun and then uh they the other townspeople blow him away they robocop him this is our town <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and then end movie not not at, not before getting the weirdest comedic shot in the entire film the just, monkey, <laughs> the monkey being like, him being like did you see anything tigger and he's like <laughs> looks at the monkeys and he's like okay nah all right. <laughs> I was gonna graze over but then no you know what you're right um the police ask all right somebody's gonna have to explain this and everybody's just like nope didn't see nothing no you're still gonna have to explain this you guys see anything no I didn't see anything what's that a big pile of shotgun sitting just out of eye shot right over there <laughs> smoke still coming from them they kill the cop fingerprints <laughs> yeah. like all this stuff like there are five dead bodies in this house yeah. and the cops are just gonna be like well this guy was paying us but you know what whatever it's cool <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I guess yeah one can only assume that they're like alright we'll cover it up 
Maybe. A weird one. I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the cops are like, all right. <laughs> and then, and then Dalton and, and Doc, like, get a staph infection as they're fucking in the lake. Like, that's <laughs> yes. the end of the movie. Like, what do you want? <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, that, that's, that's about it. Would you recommend this movie? Yeah. It's kick ass. Yeah, I would, I would tell people to watch this over and over again. Yes. Like, I totally would. Uh, Roadhouse. Now, uh, does anybody in the audience have any questions? That they feel like we didn't cover tonight. Anything um, that we gla- like we glossed over that we should talk about. I know. I mean, we did cover it pretty heavily. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, who are you? Uh, hold on. So how this is going to work is your name, who you would cast in Patrick Swayze's role, and then your question. You think you got it? I don't know why it Patrick you can pick anything just right off the top of your head. Pick you got Kurt it, Russell. Okay, okay, okay. Ready? Go. I would pick PB Herman. <laughs> just change the tone. Just change the tone. <laughs> My question is, where was Brad going in the when he was doing the the singing driving? And then he ends. He was driving the ops direction of Patrick Swayze. Uh, back to his house. But then ends up at the auto parts store. Seconds after, with somebody else, maybe he went to go pick up Jimmy. Oh shit, that's funny. He was just being a dick in the road on like, purpose. Literally, <laughs> He's like, like three seconds after he got there. <laughs> Damn, you are right. I was like, is this a different? Is this a different villain? Like that's why I thought there was another evil rich villain. Are you saying that this film with a 39% on Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> may have a plot hole in it? <laughs> but also the fact that, like, I, I, I do have something on that, though. Uh, for somebody who is the richest man in town, he's driving just an 80s Ford Mustang convertible. The worst car ever made. <laughs> the shittiest Mustang. But it does take, we didn't touch on this, and this is my favorite part, it takes a special kind of asshole to go to your house else in a helicopter and just landed on your lawn. <laughs> also, I want to touch back on Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> hey, that'd be sick. <laughs> I ripped his throat out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brad is basically um, uh, Francis's dad with all that taxidermy up on the wall. What if, what if they call your mother a whore? I know what you are, what am I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Chalk one that one up on the board for Swayze when he's like, "Well, is she?" It's yeah. like, "Fuck." <laughs> yeah. Uh, anybody else questions? Okay. Yeah. Oh, now remember, sir, uh, your name, who you would cast as Patrick Swayze, and your question, and go. Uh, I'm Sam. I hey, would Sam. have Keanu Reeves do Ooh. it. So you'd have like the whole like point and break back to back. Oh, shit. I don't know. So it's just like literally just shooting up the whole place. Yeah. <laughs> it's the John Wick of Steady Universe. <laughs> he has like 15 words the whole movie, you know, like two more than maybe Swayze. <laughs> when Doc like sees him rip the throat out, he's like, it's fine. We'll just go in this like this phone booth real quick. <laughs> And I guess what I would ask is, what's with the grandfather picture? It's like the like weirdest, like non-continuous thing in the film. My I, grandfather's an asshole, but for a, I kid you not, I, I leaned over to my fiance Carly and I said, "Is that guy wearing a Nazi uniform?" Because <laughs> like I was, I was like, "That'd be a weird twist." Yeah, he was an asshole, <laughs> right on par with the people in this town. But <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your question. Anybody else? Oh, hey. What's up, sir? Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Edgar. I'll take uh, don't, oh. <laughs> um, uh, I would cast Rutger Hauer, the recently belated Rutger Hauer. Oh, oh shit. Rest in peace. Man, you got to bring it down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I was thinking, what, what's with the, the lady in a Ferrari in the beginning? I mean, I thought it was part of the story. Oh, the uh, chick just walking? Yeah. Y- yeah. <laughs> that scene, that was, <laughs> well, that's for Roadhouse 3. <laughs> yeah, she's actually a huge character in Roadhouse 3. <laughs> oh. No, that um, that shot lingers on her feet for so long that I thought I was back watching Once Upon a Time in Hollywood for a moment there. <laughs> <laughs> or any Tarantino Or movie. any Tarantino film. But everybody's yeah. like, I didn't see it because I so, so chose to see this shitty movie tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, saw it, we saw it at 11.30 the other night, and it was late when we got out. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh. Right here in front. All right. <laughs> Go. Hello, I'm Walter, and hey. uh, uh, past guest of the show. <laughs> yes. uh, pa- yeah, and uh, 
The person that I would cast to play Dalton would be, for sure, Vern Troyer. Oh, shit! <laughs> so what is he, like, jumping up, ripping throats? <laughs> like, well, well, he's like, can you come down here? <laughs> First of all, all the small jokes would be quadruple the quality. He'd be like... <laughs> Oh, I thought you'd be a lot bigger. You know, <laughs> he's just down there like, yeah, fuck you, man. Like, <laughs> Every line is just, ee! <laughs> That's what my parents said when I was born, you piece of shit. <laughs> but like, here's the other thing is that I've seen the Austin Powers moves. Vern Troyer knows karate. That oh, dude, shit. That'd be he, sweet. <laughs> that dude is swift as lightning. <laughs> he fucking I, don't, I don't think I fuck guys like you in prison. <laughs> <laughs> I used to fuck guys like you in prison. He goes back and Tyrion Lannister and him are just like fucking <laughs> smashing. <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> Anyone else? Here, he's give his Question. Oh, you had a question. <laughs> All right. I do have one question. Why the fuck was Doc there at the massacre? She's there long before the police. Uh, Dalton never tells her he's going to, to uh, Brad's house. He just like pulls this knife out of his out of his homie's body and is like, now it's time for revenge. You know, rams his fucking car through the door. She has no idea this is happening. She just shows up, walks through a house littered with the corpses of armed men and just like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> That was exactly where to go. Like, yeah, I'm going to go to the trophy hunting room. That's right where they're going to be. That's where all the dead bodies do you, are. Do you do you want the explanation? Because I got it. Oh, no. This, this is so sexual. Why are you, like, on him know. like this? <laughs> For uh, everyone listening, he was, like, on him, ready to give him a lap dance. Hold on, hold on. Eagle eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually it's actually a different power that every like character seemingly ha- everyone close to him has this sixth sense of like he's getting his ass kicked. <laughs> like uh, uh, what's his butt? Sam Elliott yeah. just shows up at the right time of him getting his ass kicked, and then she just shows up right at the right time of him getting his ass kicked. It's weird, man. All right, anybody else? Whoa. Wow. Okay. Last one. Last one. Here Lots we go. Lots of can- God damn. It is hot as hell in this den. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh. Hey, I'm Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Hey. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I my guessing suggestion is just by pure ass shot, and I want to see Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> you know, he's the only one who can match that that toned ass. You know that uh <laughs> that, those kill t- puns tails t- again. <laughs> those kill puns have the same delivery that he would be able to give, so it's a pretty good casting choice. I mean, he's a natural, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to be nice. Oh wait, that's <laughs> Arnold. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did not hit her. I did. I did not rip his throat out. I did not. <laughs> I'm tearing you apart, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, my only question is, uh, why do uh, Patrick Swayze's pants have so many pleats in them? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like an ocean wave. Like okay, so there are the wavy pants Jonathan was talking about. Yeah, they're like canvas or something. I don't know what, how that goes. He uh, de- uh, no, they're they're linen. I got it finally. Linen is the word. I was looking for. Yeah, it is. Like I said, weird apparel choices. Like, give him one thing. Like, yeah. like karate master in one scene, bouncer in the other, linen pant guy in the next. Right. I, I just like am confused. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, anybody else had any casting? Just casting pieces that just they were yell it out. Who, just, yeah, just yell it out. Ah, yes, okay. Jean Claude Van Damme, Bloodsport. That was the name I was looking for. Yeah, yeah I get it. Why you called him Bloodsport? <laughs> because I couldn't think of the name. Damn. I was like, three names, three names. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, <laughs> what are you giving that this film on the very concurrent for our show, Jaws Scale? Oh, um, so anybody who's unfamiliar, we rate our films from Jaws 1 to Jaws 4. <laughs> And, and as we've been watching them, we realize that may not be a fair way of, uh, of ranking them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, for me, Jaws 2. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's not a masterpiece per se, but like I would watch it all the time, just like Jaws 2. Okay, all right. I'll give it, I'll give it a Jaws 2, purely based on our scale. 
<laughs> but if yeah. I was talking what we discovered, Jaws 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Everyone knows um, Jaws 3 is better. That's what we thought about it, and we heard from everybody in the audience except one person. There's one person that we always ask, and it's Tyler's fiance. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what did Carly think? Carly, come here. Come on stage for, for once. Nobody ever <laughs> sees you. Come on stage. Sit with me. I d- don't sit on Patrick Swayze's ghost. <laughs> come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. All right. No, he moved seats. <laughs> All right. So give me your honest opinion. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, forget him. <laughs> mm. Well, you know what? I would watch this again. This is one that I would watch again. Anyway. Um, okay. You know, I know everyone else had questions, but I do have a few questions. There we go. <laughs> um, okay. How does, what's his name, Brad? How is he making money? Because he's <laughs> burning down these buildings. He's destroying. That's what I was asking, lot. too. Like People are excited about the car. <laughs> right? I'm like, you guys have nowhere else to buy cars now. I he does mention that he's basically like the real estate tycoon of the town. He's the when does he say that? He says, I'm the one who brought the, 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 the JC Pennies. The JC Pennies, and they'll never file for bankruptcy, I swear to God. There's a Mervyn's in town. This guy's like filthy rich. Like he seems, I mean, I don't know, he's riding a helicopter to his house. Yeah. It's it's from all the like extortion <laughs> that he's doing to people. I think. Well, because they said he's taking ten percent. It's not that. What do you think about it? Um, but also, how does a bar owner affording to pay Patrick Swayze five hundred dollars a night when his bar is literally getting destroyed every night? That's because um, all the money was he was being funded by Mondo Burger to build their 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 Midwest branch. Because <laughs> no, <laughs> that was a deep uh, <laughs> good burger cut for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> he got <Too> it. Deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Um, Everyone in this movie has money for no goddamn reason. <laughs> the the same thing as the bar owner. Where is he getting all this money to like multi million dollar renovate his bar? I I don't understand because it seems like a small town. I don't understand how that bar is packed once they reopen. Yeah, it was like no. I only came here to break shit. There was a line <laughs> outside. Yeah, that yeah. was weird too. And it wasn't one of those things where they're like keep a line outside to look busy. No, the inside was just as busy. I love the girls who pull up outside of the scene too, and they're like, "We're here." It's like, yeah, no shit, you're parked in front. <laughs> we like, came for that other bar in the beginning of the movie. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that that's a good assessment. That's a good assessment. You good? You want to stay up here? Or you want to go sit back down? You oh, you're stay. staying up here. Yeah. You stay up here. <laughs> um, so that's what Carly thought. Uh, and, but we still haven't heard from the most important people in the world, and that is the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, these are 10 star reviews from IMDb. The first one, titled Confidential, uh, written by Confidential 67897, <laughs> titled Just Roadhouse. Quite simply, an 80s classic. Any one bloke who watched... What? He's Australian, dude. God. Any one bloke <laughs> who watched this as a teen and didn't try to round kick his mate in the face and then say, <laughs> Roadhouse is lying. <laughs> that wasn't said one time. No, that's just a joke no, that's from just Family, a family guy. Guy <laughs> It has no validity whatsoever. Okay. So the next one is written by the old guy from Halloween 3. <laughs> Thrill me. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, titled, The Best Movie of All Time Should Have Swept the Oscars. <laughs> the year 1988 is considered the most by most movie critics to be the last golden age of cinema. <laughs> According most to most movie feed. critics. <laughs> um, that legendary year saw the theatrical release of three of Hollywood's most beloved films, the Sylvester Stallone masterpiece, Tango and Cash, <laughs> The Burbs. That's a good one. A, I'll give him that. Great movie. And our current topic of, of discussion, Roadhouse. Did he write it for us? <laughs> um, bodacious fight scenes, hot chicks, bad music, and monster trucks, redneck heaven, 10 stars. <laughs> Also, I would say not bad music. That's probably one of the best parts of this movie is the music itself. Yeah. 
And then our last one was uh, written by Mick Mickey Mick. <laughs> <laughs> titled okay. The Greatest Patrick Swayze Movie Ever. The movie that has everything you could ever want in cinema. Action, romance, suspense, martial arts, rednecks. <laughs> the Mon Hills Have Eyes is great. <laughs> Monster trucks and so much more. What's that? And <laughs> Patrick Swayze. I guarantee you'll fall in love with this film. You'll laugh. You'll cry. <laughs> you'll cheer for Dalton, the best cooler of all time. You'll also learn so much about the side of bouncers few rarely get to see the caring they sensitive. are really good they are really good at making sure people don't go in the bar <laughs> the caring sensitive philosophical brave honest trustworthy loyal fuzzy warm tender side anyway i ran out of adjectives <laughs> green i'm trying to the fill imdb's count <laughs> it says i have to make 10 lines to make this review <laughs> makes you want to hug every bouncer you see <laughs> even if he did just kick the shit out of you at the bar for being drunk <laughs> it's like he went home after getting kicked out of a bar and just watched this movie and was like he, i get it now he was dancing on the bar they're like get out and they beat the shit out of him and he went home and watched <laughs> it and was like you know what i am an asshole <laughs> i get it i should have stripped <laughs> i was lucky he didn't rip my throat out yeah. <laughs> Um, e even if he did just kick the shit out of you at the bar for being drunk, it's because he cares. <laughs> it also contains some of the greatest movie lines ever. How about, quote, pain don't hurt or, quote, option uh, or opinions vary. <laughs> what a classic that was. You remember that? I remember that from the movie. <laughs> yeah. Or better yet, quote, be nice until it's time not to be nice. Classic. Classic. Anyway, rent it, buy it, watch it, love it. Ten stars. Yeah. <laughs> Roadhouse. Roadhouse. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you had a good time tonight, let me hear you make some noise. Yee! Thank you for being here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Um, be sure to follow us at Bombs Away Show. Be sure on your way out, get those tickets for Chopping Mall. $10 only at tonight's register, only tonight. So please get those tickets. Thank you for joining us. We'll be out in the lobby if you want to speak to us. Have a good night. Thank you. <laughs>